Well, I'm here in, a, in um, Knox City, uh, Texas. I uh, found an ad on Craigslist uh, for some cedar posts, and those will be the posts for the loft. And so I drove and finally found the place. And uh, what we did was this gentleman right here, um, name is Jeremy. Yes, sir. Jeremy, uh, he sells cedar posts and logs. And, landscaping. Yeah, he does landscaping. Right. So, uh, but he helped me cut everything to a size that fits in my truck. And you can see this is how they turn out. Uh, this is how they start. And, you know, he gets about anywhere from uh, $8 to $15 a post. And so you can take these things and I'll be using a, a sander and uh, they're in the back of my truck. And basically, uh, if everything works out right, then uh, this will be the logs for the loft that I uh, saw in the last video. So there you go, that's how you find them. Okay, well, here we go, starting again on part six. Um, today we're gonna be, um, basically we're gonna be uh, planting some wood uh, for the loft and we're actually gonna be using the same wood on the floor um, just to save money. It's, uh, it's kind of a rough wood, but not too rough. Um, pine, just regular old pine would do the same thing that you buy in the lumber yard or sometimes you can just find people who have a stack of wood that you can plane down a little bit. Um, this had some mold on it, not the super dangerous kind of mold, but um, we're taking that mold off and taking a, getting a nice sharp, uh, I mean clean edge um, so we don't have to do as much sanding. Um, and then we're also going to be peeling logs. Um, I don't have, like I used to have a long time ago, I don't have a log peeler. So I had an idea and I wasn't going to show it to you until I was sure it would work. This is my idea. <laughs> this is like a barbecue spatula that I found in uh, like the local store Atwoods. Uh, it's a real manly kind of uh, grilling spatula. But if you look, it's got a nice edge on it. And I tried it out, it actually works really great. Um, so it was like $9 and that's cheaper. And I'll show you how to use this later to peel logs for the loft. And we'll use the different logs for different trim in the cabin. But what I wanted to show you right now is a trick that a lot of people don't know um, concerning like table saws, saw blades and such. Uh, in this case, a planer blade. So now this planer is not mine. A really good friend Ernesto loaned it to me. Um, and so what I noticed when I first started planting is it was really hard to push the wood through, which to me is a sign that, um, that the blades are dull. So uh, um, he, had, he just didn't, he didn't know that you could uh, you know, pull the blades out. He probably did know, but he hadn't had a chance to do it. In this case, in a lot of cases, those planter blades have two edges. So, but that's one thing I'm going to show you, but the main thing I'm going to show you is this, that you don't always have to sharpen these blades. Okay, the DeWalt planer makes it really slick. They give you a little uh, handle that has magnets on the back. So once you take it loose, you can grab that blade and pull it out. Well, that's the theory anyway. How about we just grab it by hand? One thing about these, they are very sharp. Um, Let's see if I can get that out. Okay, there we go. All right. So here's what the blade looks like. And as you can see, there's two sides. Okay. But if you look really close on the one side here, you can see it's got a lot of crap on there. And that doesn't always mean that it needs to be sharpened. What it actually means is that you could probably take some mineral spirits or other solvents and clean that out and put it right back in and use it again. It does take some time. It's a beautiful day. I'd rather be out working, but I can't afford to buy a $700 planter right now. Um, and as an all fairness to my friend, the thing to do is to service his for him, you know, so when he gets it back, it's nice and sharp. So we'll see how that works a little bit later. Okay. So we've got the planter all cleaned up, getting ready to set it up. And I'll show you what I've done so far. I've took the planter, um, the blinding sunlight, and uh, put it on the board, made like a little stop here with some two by fours so the planter doesn't slide. Um, I got a nice table that's got some paint on it so the boards will come off real easy uh, so you don't, the 
because any kind of friction at all will slow the planer down, the wood down. Um, over here, I've got my shot back duct taped on here. Obviously, that's not the right setup, but it works really well. Now, also what works is when you're planing, you generate a lot of sawdust. And um, you can empty out one of these things 20 times in just a small amount of wood. So what I figured out was that my trash can is basically the same size as my the bottom of my shock back thing. So I just took some uh, baling wire, you know, that's a handyman's answer to just about everything, baling wire and duct tape, and made a, a lot bigger volume shop back for that. Okay, so that's that kind of covers what we're gonna do on the as far as using the planer. But one thing I did want to show you is um, here I can show you some wood that I've already planed. Um, it's pretty it's pretty smooth. You can see some rotted edges down here on the end. Uh, we'll be cutting that off. But the most important thing about the wood that I bought was it had a lot. Of, it sat outside and got some mildew on it. So this morning I took some bleach, a couple uh, tablespoons full, and put it in the spray bottle with some water. And I've been going and uh, wetting down the, you can see my shadow there, <laughs> wetting down the wood with that bleach and going to let the sun dry that out and hopefully by the time I've got this first batch of wood um, planed off this will be dry and uh, ready to plane. Very important though if you're allergic to any kind of mold, um, I, this is not the most dangerous mold but it is dangerous to people who have allergies. So if you have an allergy for that make sure you wear a good dust mask. I myself have got this one and uh, that should do it for me. But anyway, we'll see what the wood looks, looks like when we're done and show you how to uh, peel logs a little bit later. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how to plane your wood if you've never used one of these. Um, one thing you want to do is check the thickness of your wood to see where to start. If it's three quarters of an inch thick, you may want to start at seven eighths because if the wood is cupped, then it's going to be a little thicker. So I've already set this to about seven eighths and I'm already planed a couple of sides, but you can see that some of this still had some of that mold on there. I've already sprayed it all with bleach and now we want to take that off. So it's going to get noisy, but I want to show you we're sucking it with a shot back into a trash can and this is a, a really fine planer um, I'm not a big name dropper but I will say that this DeWalt makes it super easy to clean the blades I've never seen anything quite that easy to change blades so here we go protection against any sawdust or mold it's gonna get loud so <laughs> want to show you now the difference this is how the wood looks after just one pass and that's how it looks before we do anything you can see the remnants of some dead mold that was on here starting to grow uh, you can see now how it's starting to you know take on some character and what we'll do is we'll identify any places where the wood was starting to rot from being left out and we'll cut this back and just use the good part and that's how you make beautiful wood out of wood that's been neglected. Okay, so here we are at log peeling school again. 
Um, one thing I was going to show you, it's a good idea to keep keep a rag around um, because a lot of times a, a draw knife won't really um, get dull, but it will get covered up with tree sap. So some just some rubbing alcohol and a rag, you can clean that really good and keep peeling. This is a stainless steel spatula, so it'll hold an edge a little longer. So there's two ways to go about it. One thing is you typically want to peel from the thick side of the log to the skinny side of the log. So you're not going into the grain. Um, the grain does this number. So when you go that way, you'll gouge it more. Unless you're just really careful. So I'm going to show you both ways, the way to pull and push with a spatula. So I'm going to grab both sides and go slight angle. And you have a little, you know, better control when you're using two hands. So when you get to knots, you can kind of contour around the, or scallop around the contours of the knot. So uh, that's what we're doing. Like I said, you can see how green this log was. So I will typically peel as much as I can. If you don't have the energy to do this, you can literally get sanders and do the same thing, just a lot noisier and uh, I don't think it's as pretty either when you're done. So we'll fit, we'll do a little bit more here around this knot and then I'll show you how to dress it up with the uh, grinder. And on the grinder I used a particular kind of uh, grinding wheel that's more like a sanding disc. Okay, so that's good enough to show you. Another thing to know that if the log is really green, it's hard to use a sander because it'll keep pulling up these little furs. So your final sanding, you wanna wait till the log is nice and dry. So put on the headphones or ear protection. This is the kind of sanding disc I have. It's got, you know, a lot of different pieces of sanding pads. This one is an 80 grit. And I basically use it just to do, to dress up the knots. So there you go, that's how you take like a cedar fence post and make it into a, um, a exposed beam loft log. Uh, just doing it by hand with a spatula and you can buy like a $30 grinder and accomplish the same thing. So that's it. Well that's going to do it for our part 6 video, tried to not, not to make it too long. Um, just showing you a few little tricks on some of the trim aspects of uh, doing a tiny house, things that can save you money if you have more time than money especially. So uh, next we'll be taking those logs and shaping them, putting a flat top on them and, uh, and then put them in place and then we'll put those planks on top of the log. So uh, also going to be moving the front door over about six inches that will help gain us some space on the loft for a queen size bed so all that will be coming up hopefully within just a few weeks so uh, god bless and we'll talk to you later have a great day Hello, okay, well, we're starting part six of uh, how to build a tiny house. And so I'm planing a lot of wood um, 
hold on.